Hello, welcome to Pirkei Avos with Rabbeinu Yona. We are on the first chapter, and we are in the middle of Mishnah 5. Mishnah continues, Ve'al tarba sicha im ha'isha. Do not talk excessively with women. Be'ishta amru, and this was, talk, this was speaking about your wife. Ka'va chaymer, all the more so be'eshes chaveru, with your friend's wife. So the Mishnah says, one should not speak excessively with his wife, and all the more so with his friend's wife, and we'll see what this means. Mikan amru chachamim, from here the sages said, all times that a person excessively speaks with women, he causes evil to befall himself. He neglects his Torah study, and in the end, he will inherit Gehenim, or as translated hell, but it's not literally hell. So this is a very strongly worded Mishnah. So let's see Rabbeinu Yonah what he has to say. But what we're going to see is that Judaism has a very realistic view of human beings and of the Yetzirah, of the evil inclination, and how they're made. How, 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 how is this so? Well, obvious, because who created man? God. And who tells man how to act based on how he was created? God. This is, uh, this is our Mesorah. So let's see what it means. What does it mean, Ve'al tar imeisha? A person should not speak excessively with women. So... The Rabbeinu Yonah says, "Shesichas nashim avili dehirhor avero bito Torah." Speaking to women causes a person to have immoral thoughts, thoughts of sinning. Right? Someone's talking to a woman that could cause him to start think, uh, thinking of doing a sin with her, and that will lead to neglect of Torah study. He's going to say later, and the Rambam writes that thinking of Torah and thinking immoral thoughts are total opposites that the brain cannot think about at the same time. So, if a person his mind is occupied with thoughts of znus, of immorality, of thoughts of a sexual nature, he will not be able to successfully study Torah. And on the other hand, if a person occupies himself with Torah, he won't be so prone to have those sexual thoughts. But if a person speaks with women, it will cause these thoughts to come. Now it says, What does this mean with your wife? With a person's wife? So, so, because of Rashi, Rashi explains this to me in Zechorah Rocham. Ki ba'avaz the Rabbi Nelson Aymer, in avaz the Rabbi Nelson, it says, Be'ishto ni the amru, your wife, excuse me that I'm eating something, it's a cough drop, I've been having a little bit of a cough. Be'ishto ni the amru, it's talking about your wife who's a nida. Ka'vachayim rebe'eshes chavero, all the more so with somebody's, with your friend's wife. So, a uh, nida is a woman, a person's wife, who is menstruating or about to menstruate or has just menstruated, and... A person is not, a man is not allowed to have relations with his wife, and a wife is not allowed, allowed to have relations with her husband during that time of the month. So what Rashi explains is that this is the type of wife, uh, this uh, a person should not speak too much to his wife when she's in her nida state. Why is this so? Verotzalar means to say, You shouldn't talk excessively with her. doesn't mean you shouldn't talk at all. I mean, you shouldn't talk excessively with her. Because maybe your Yetzahara will overcome you. And you'll commit a sin. Right? You start speaking a lot to your wife when she's in Nida, and the feeling, feelings, are, uh, feelings come up, and you might, you might do a sin. But all the more so with your friend's wife. If you speak to your friend's wife in such a way, then that also might lead to sin. Now, what's the kavachim? Why all the more so? So if we're worried that you might have relations with your wife when she's in Nida, and she's going to be allowed to you in a few days, perhaps, or in a week or so. And the we're still worried that by speaking to her too much, you might not be able to control yourself. So, so, so too a strange woman, your friend's wife, that a person desires her even more. Because as King Solomon said, stolen waters are sweet. This means that if we're talking about a person has a wife who's Anita, so she's going to be, he can have relations with her in a permitted way in a few weeks or in a few days. And still we're saying, you know, don't talk to her too much because we're still worried that you might come to sin. So all the more so by a friend's wife who's never allowed to you or, or, or a woman that you're not married to, all the more so we're worried that you might sin with her if you speak too much. And the reason is why, Mayim genuvim yutaku, something which is forbidden, People desire. People desire things which are forbidden. I heard from, uh, in the name of Rav Nachum Lansky, a Rebbe in Eretz why is it mayim genuvim taku? Right? Water. A stolen water is sweet. Why not like a stolen steak? 
A stolen steak is sweet. Why is stolen water, stolen honey? Because water has no taste. Right? Not, it's nothing. It's par. It's like whatever. No taste at all. But if it's stolen, even something with no taste, if it's forbidden, then you desire it. So even something which has no pleasure at all, but it's forbidden, you want to do it. A human being wants to do it. So we have to be careful of that. So all the more so with something that a person wants to do anyway and is forbidden, there's even more of a desire for it. Okay, that's the way Rashi explains. Now, Rabbeinu Yonah, V'nir al-Far Shukibshuta, Rabbeinu Yonah says, no, we're not talking about a woman who's a Nida, we're saying it regular. Be'ishto Amr, we're talking about his wife, Shalola Hargilo B'dvarim La'olam, he in general shouldn't talk to her too much. K'day Shaloi Ehi Matzo Yimam B'chol Yom, that he shouldn't be with her all the time. She'en Le'i Adam Li'os Im Ishto Le'hanasu, because really, ideally, we're going to see this is really an ideal state of, a, of a, someone who has reached the apex of holiness, perhaps, I'm not sure this is for everybody, that if a person's always talking with his wife, a person really shouldn't be technically with his wife for enjoyment. Ah, k'day the kind of mitzvah, but to do the mitzvah. Right? A, a man has a mitzvah to uh, to have uh, relations with his wife, one, for procreation, and two, because of his marital duties. But really, technically, the best way is that a man shouldn't have, shouldn't do it for enjoyment. Now, obviously, this is a, a very high level, as he says, and he's, it seems that he's it's clear like that because he's going to say lahafrish ben adam lebehemim to separate this separates a man from a beast, right? Why do beasts, why do animals have relations just for their enjoyment? Like it says in the They instituted that we don't do this anymore. They instituted that a man after he has a seminal mission should go to the mikvah so that he before he speaks words of Torah or daven so that he shouldn't be with his wife like a chicken, like chickens. But who this precious? Now this is precious. Precious is when we separate ourselves from things that are allowed. We're going to read about it in this week's Parsha, in Parsha's Kedoshim, that even though the Torah, the Torah really, according to the Torah law, you could, a person could sit in his house all day and stuff his face with food and have relations with his wife all day. But that's not the way Hashem wanted us to live. And technically, he didn't violate any prohibitions, right? He ate kosher food and he's with his wife, who's allowed to him. So what's going on here? So he says that the Torah says the... This is the Ramban in the Parsha says, Kedoshim to you should be holy. So this is a similar idea. Being holy means separating from things that the Torah even permits. So he's saying here that an aspect of precious is when a person has relations with his spouse, with his wife, for mitzvah purposes and not for the purpose of enjoyment. And with Yosel Madregos, how Jonas brings a person to holy levels, Kedamrina, like we say, precious Mavi Tara. Precious brings to purity. And if you look in the Masilah uh, Shasharim, written by the Ramchal. Precious is a high level. That's one of the higher levels that a person can attain in his spiritual growth. And again, we're talking about a person who is going above the letter of the law. So according to Rabbi Yon, it seems that this Mishnah is that a person shouldn't excessively speak, even with his wife, seems to be going above the letter of the law from the way that he is describing it. Uh, but again, we see that there's an ideal that perhaps one day when we reach that level of holiness, we could reach we could get to. Now, Mekan Omer Chachamim, from here the sages said, Kol Hamar Basicha Yimei Yishi Gorim Rala Atzmo. Somebody who speaks excessively with women causes evil to himself. So what does this mean? Climber, that is to say, Gorim Shah Yetzim is Gaber, love it causes that the Yetzahara overcomes him. Shanik Rara, because the Yetzahara is called evil. Shanemar, Ki Yetzir Leva Adam Ram and Urav. A person's Yetzir is evil from from his youth. Kidamrin, like we say, Godal Yetzahara, Shibar Korara. The creator of the Yetzirah called it evil. Shinemar, as it says, Ki Yetzalev Adam Ram and Urav. V'zeha ish garm haralatzma. Now this person who's excessively speaking to women, he caused evil to befall himself. Shinasan al makam v'hazman al hidabik begufa al yidei hasicha. He found an opportunity to, I guess, hidabik begufa al yidei hasicha, to have his, to cleave to this, to, to be speaking to this, to this, to, to women constantly. Or a lot. Hifriz alamidos yaisim sharbanim. So he's doing worse than other people. Shepa'amim yitzahar mizgabralim. For other people, right, let's say a, a, a normal human being, he does what he's supposed to do. Sometimes the yitzahar, the evil inclination, is going to overcome him and he's going to sin. But what does this guy do? But this guy, he incites the Yetzirah. He goes out of his way to excessively speak with women, causing him to incite his Yetzirah. If a normal 
person who's not going around speaking excessively with women, the Yitzhahara is also going to entice him because he's a human being. There's a, there, there is a desire. A man has a desire for a woman. So if the Yitzhahara is already attacking such a person, this guy, he's inciting himself, making it even harder for himself. So that is bad. We see here, you know, I was mentioning before, the Torah recognizes the reality of the relationship between men and women. And a man has a natural desire for a woman. That's why there's a mechitz in shul. That's why there are a lot of gedarim, uh, a lot of fences put up between physical fences and and the halachic fences put up between men and women. There's laws of yichud. A man isn't supposed to cohabitate. Excuse me, not cohabitate. It's not supposed to be secluded with a woman. And there are many, many laws and many safeguards that are meant between are put between men and women because the Torah recognizes the reality. Of that men have a desire for women, and the men's Yitzhahara has to be controlled. That's what Rabbi Yon is saying here. It's hard enough if you don't incite it yourself, but if you're inciting it yourself by constantly speaking with women, it's going to be very difficult. Right? A man is not even allowed to look at a woman for enjoyment. And this is why also many Orthodox publications don't put pictures of women in them. And again, this is not a requirement, but there is a prohibition to gaze at women for enjoyment, and there is a prohibition to gaze at other parts of women of a woman that's usually uncovered, even if it's for not enjoyment. To see the details of that law, you can look in the laws of Shema and the Mishnah Bura. If anyone's interested, they can they can uh, contact me. But again, the reason is it's not because of some you know secret misogynistic uh, conspiracy by orthodoxy to keep pictures of women out of the magazines. It's because these the clientele of these magazines they live a holy life. And they want to try their best to not incite their evil inclination, to not expose themselves to pictures of women when they don't have to. Again, this is not a requirement, but it's a very nice thing that they do. And that's what the Rabbeinu Yonah is saying here. It's hard, enough, it's hard enough being a human being, being constantly attacked by the Eight Sahara. so we have to do our best to avoid all cases, all, all uh, situations where we might, where we might incite it. Someone actually told me that they saw the guidelines for the U.S. Army and the rules that they have of separation between the sexes is almost exactly the same as the Shulchan Aruch when it comes to the laws of Yichud, of the laws of how a man and a woman shouldn't be secluded. Okay, so let's continue. Ubotam Adivrei Torah, if a person will be excessively speaking with women, we said he's going to neglect his Torah study, if a person, like we said before, he won't be able to study Torah if he's constantly thinking about women and talking to women. These are two opposite thoughts that a person can't have at the same time. But so for Yorish Gehenim, in the end he's going to go to Gehenim. He's going to inherit Gehenim, hell. Because in the end of the day he's going to do a sin, like we're saying, a person who's constantly inciting his Yetzirah, his evil inclination, eventually he's going to end up doing a sin. If he's constantly just going whenever he feels like it, speaking with her, he's going to do a sin and go to Gehenim. This is what King Solomon says. All of a sudden, now he's going to quote a verse from King Solomon and he's going to explain it. I found something more bitter than death. The woman who snares and her heart is net. Asur miyadeha and chains for her hands. Tov lifnei elokim yimali mimenu. Good is a person in front of God who runs away from her. V'chote yilachi ba and a sinner will be trapped by her. So now Rabbi Yonah is going to explain what this verse means. Rotz alimer. This means to say, ki amavus yisereu mechay olam akaton. That death removes a person from this world, this small world. Right, everybody's going to die, but this is not the real world. But a woman, uh, who, a person who's ensnared by a woman that he's not supposed to be with, that's going to cause his soul uh, to be affected eternity. That will cause his soul to be lost forever. So that's more bitter than death. Death is something that only affects the physical person in this world. Whereas doing a sin affects the soul forever. Asher him and Sodom, which are traps. Adam Kevan a man since he's looking at a woman Nilkut who he'll get ensnared with her with her net a sherhim which traps he's he's not going to he's not going to be able to run away from her so here you see that Rabbi Yonah says that looking at a woman can entice 
a person to sin with her. And I think this is obvious because men have a Yetzirah. So just to mention again, again, it's not a requirement not to put pictures of women in Orthodox magazines, but this is where it's coming from. You have a source right here in Rabbeinu Yonah, but you don't need Rabbeinu Yonah for that. So the people who say that it's because of misogyny and those organizations that say it's because of misogyny, either they're lying or they're just ignorant of the Torah sources. Again, it's not a requirement, but you see from here what the source is. Why? Why is it so dangerous when you look at the woman? Because a person sees what his heart wants and he doesn't see what's going to happen. Like the poet, the Piet said, seduced dove goes to the desert. He sees the grain. He doesn't see the trap. Right, when a person wants something and the Yitzhahara is overpowering him, a human being doesn't think rationally. So the Torah here recognizes that when a person is in the power of the passion, when the passion is overcoming him, it's very difficult, it's nearly impossible to overcome it. So the Torah says, don't speak a lot with women this way. You don't even get to the situation where the Yitzhahara may entice you. The Haramim Liba and his heart and snares. Kishihicho Shekas is Adam Baliba when he desires a woman. When she, oh, excuse me. When a woman wants a man in her heart, he absolutely kashalba. It's impossible that he won't uh, sin with her. Even if he doesn't want her. He says here, this part of the verse means if a woman is seducing a man, even if really he doesn't he doesn't want it so much, it's very difficult for him not to sin. Because it was his bad mazel that this should happen to him. It sounds like because a person here, if a person's a sinner, if a person's a tzaddik, God is going to help him avoid situations where he's being enticed to sin. But if he's a sinner, Hashem doesn't help him avoid those situations. Asur miyadeha, her hands are are traps. Sheim achzaso biyadeh. If a woman, this woman grabs a man, kvar lakuach hu bebeis asurim. It's like he's already in prison. V'shuv ein latakana. He has no hope. Tov lifnei alakim yimali mimena v'chote ilachid ba. A good before Hashem is someone who runs away from her. V'chote in the sinner will be trapped by her. Like he said, we mentioned before. Shat zadikim hakadosh baruch hu shaimram ve'enam mizamnam b'shum davar shiuchul likasher ba. The righteous Hashem watches over them, and He doesn't allow anything to come that might trap them. However, if a person who's a sinner and he doesn't distance himself from evil places, then Hashem organizes it that he will have the opportunity to sin. So a person who tries not to sin, Hashem will help him not sin. And a person who doesn't care and isn't careful, Hashem will help him to sin. But you see here, again, just to summarize, the whole attitude of this Mishnah is that God created human beings a certain way. Hashem knows how men are, because he, he created them like that. He created them with the Yitzhahara to sin. So the Mishnah is telling us that it's hard enough having a Yitzhahara. A man should not do things which strengthens that Yitzhahara, because it becomes very difficult not to sin in those situations. And again, that's the source why there are prohibitions for men and women not to be secluded together because it could lead to a sin. That's why men are not allowed to listen to women sing. And again, that is the source of the practice why pictures of women are not put in Orthodox magazines. Again, not because of any misogyny. And it's not a requirement, like we mentioned before. But rather because men want to distance themselves. They don't want to do anything where they might cause to entice the Yitzhar, to strengthen the Yitzhar, because the Torah recognizes how powerful these urges are. So Rabbein Yoni, you see here, is explaining this Mishnah, how important it is to stay from the Yitzhar. And again, it's a very difficult, especially now, the, what we're all exposed to is not what it was 200 years ago in Europe. But a person could try his best. We try our best, and a person shouldn't feel bad if he fails. You know, like any area of Torah, uh, there's always tshuva, there's always repentance, and we just, we try our best. And uh, one and one shouldn't ascribe nefarious motives 
to people who engage in these practices for misogyny. That's just a, a sick thing to do when the people are really just trying their best to serve Hashem and people either who are ignorant or unfortunately maybe let's just hope that they're ignorant and not something else that they accuse people of, of, of nefarious motives who are really just trying their best to serve Hashem. You may not agree with it. You might not want to go that far in your personal observance of Hashem. But because someone else chose to observe Hashem in a, in a more stringent way, there's no reason to ascribe to them bad motives. Okay, a little longer class today. Wishing everyone a beautiful day. If you have any questions, want to follow up, please feel free to give me a call or send me an email. Thanks.